FPL Nymphria and welcome back to the home of FPL videos. Who knew that 63 points in FPL would result in a red arrow? With that, let's take a look at how I got on in game week 22. I needed point 2 to fund my Salah move this week and I decided to take the risk on Pope to McCarthy. Chelsea had, until this game week at least, a less than fabulous record at home. So, to move off Pope and buy McCarthy, who had Leicester at home, seemed like madness and I was willing to accept the madness that would ensue as a result. But I got pleasantly surprised, Pope conceded 3 goals and got 2 points, whilst McCarthy conceded 2 and made 4 saves for 3 points towards my team total. So did I gain massively from this switch? No, but I also didn't lose much either, thankfully. My defence in the hole did well this week. It's as if the teams are tightening up more as the season goes on and defenders are becoming more of an option again. Trent got a clean sheet for 6 points, he could have had more with 2 shots blocked and a key pass. Lundstrom also lived up to his Lord Lundstrom name, 6 points from his clean sheet and again he had a key pass and a shot blocked. So it could have been a tad more for both of them but there were just some players who found themselves working their way into the bonus points above them. Soyuncu was the surprise letdown to be honest, just 1 point from him owing to his 4th yellow card of the season. In midfield it was a mixed bag. Let's start with the negative. As I'll explain in a bit more detail later, Traore nearly left my team this week as one of my transfers for Salah. I have to admit, for all his busyness, two key passes and a big chance created, I am concerned that he may be one of these players that does a lot but doesn't really return in FPL points. This was reflected this week with just two points towards my team total. Mane had a shot off target and a shot on target. There was one dream link up that looked as if I was going to be in the money when Salah passed to Mane and the shot was saved but in the whole it wasn't Mane's best game and only banked 3 points towards my team total for his clean sheet. Salah came in for a minus 4 for Mora, that move equalled itself out when Salah got his assist for 6 points with minutes played. Salah looked good, he had 3 key passes and 1 big chance created for Mane that I mentioned a second ago but it wasn't the big romp I was hoping for to be honest. And talking of big romps, City he went absolutely nuts against Aston Villa. 6-1 was the result after Villa shutting out Leicester midweek. I genuinely did not see that coming. I considered KDB for all of 6 seconds because of him letting me down last game week as my vice captain and of course he got 2 assists for 9 points and minutes played. Moving on to my forwards and unlike last week they absolutely smashed it this week. Every single one of them returned points. Vardy got me an assist. He had 2 key passes passes and created a big chance. He also had a goal ruled offside but I'll take the 5 points double to 10 as my captain. Ings was my move for Kane this week and there was a worry that I'd cursed him as he amassed 4 shots off target and 5 shots on target but left it late to grab his goal but he could have had many to be honest and I'm feeling quite good about owning him. I was so focused on the double that I didn't even think to move to my boyfriend Aguero. I was tempted by Calvert Lewin, but I'm so far happier with Ings. Rashford was a star forward this week though with his brace. Three shots on target and he made two of them count for 12 points towards my team total. I didn't consider him for captaincy when United looked so poor against Arsenal. I also, like many, thought if he blanks against Watford it might be time to move him on. Right now, I can't see me getting rid. He is a yellow on the game but he tweeted out personally on Twitter to say he was fine and that he needed a rest with so many games games ahead. Let's hope he's not trolling us. So just to wrap up my moves, my main thought process after leaving you last week and as discussed on the FPL Wildcats live stream was after switching Kane to Ings early doors that I had to free up 0.2 for Salah from somewhere on a minus 4 hit. The moves I pondered were Pope to McCarthy which I ended up doing, didn't end up too badly. Traore to Decore which I didn't do, sad times that would have been brilliant. Rico to Williams which I also didn't do. Also sad times, that also would have been brilliant. But as you will also know, 
I considered instead of Salah this week going via Mares. Oh my word, that is a tough pill to swallow. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. And as it wouldn't have been for a hit, I'd be sat here now with his brace and an assist and I'd definitely be on a green arrow. Hands up though, rotation scared me. It just scared me too much and I didn't think my bench was strong enough to cover it as I could not have seen Dendonka's 10 points incoming. A huge opportunity missed there and that's a real stinger and I genuinely think this double game week may have hindered instead of helped because we're all looking so far ahead, I say so far but at least a couple of game weeks ahead, that we're missing those pockets of brilliance in the lead up and this was something I mentioned last week, you know, should we really be getting City and we haven't done it and I'm, I'm feeling sorry for myself after not doing it. So I'm now really considering if I've done the right thing in getting Mane and Sally for the double. All of that means I got 63 points resulting in a small red arrow leaving me on an OR of 260,743. Looking ahead to game week 23 and this is how I'm lining up currently. On paper it doesn't look that great and now that I'm on Salah and Mane I am now not sure that this was the right move for me. Sure, I have the TV to do it. I'm absolutely enough money for it. And it doesn't worry me really that much that so much cash is tied up in them when they're such good assets. What it has done though, as just mentioned, is use up a slot for other players in better form, such as Mares. I am now tempted to roll and reconsider switching to pool defence for the double. This week, Robertson and Trent outscored Mane and Salah. I will give Mane and Salah United to convince me to stay them for the double but that's a tough ask against United. I'm not scared to recorrect my mistakes however I like to give players at least two games to see if it is a mistake before correcting it. That said if I make a transfer this week Traore to Decore could be the one. Decore is nursing an injury as Dini mentioned in the post-match interview but he did allude to Decore taking painkillers and still playing on and that he would be wrapped up in cotton wool until the next game to go again. So you know that's seems like he's going to be okay. If it does make me too nervous though, Rico out to anyone affordable could be the only other transfer I make. Saying that, Bournemouth did do badly without him and Ramsdale. Not that they did well with them, but they definitely did even worse without them. So unless the Cherry signed someone, Rico could be back in the team and a transfer to kick further down the line. I'm really stuck this week. This whole double game week has my mind rattled and I really think it's okay to change your mind so I've got some serious thinking to do. Feel free to let me know what you guys think in the comments below NIMFAM. I love hearing from you. And lastly moving on to my trending transfers this week let's take a look at how things could develop ahead of game week 23. Of the goalkeepers Henderson, Ryan and McCarthy are all becoming very trendy. Henderson and Ryan have both been picked up by over 33 plus thousand managers. McCarthy is picking up pace though as 24 plus thousand managers can Consider the cheaper 4.3 option. Ramsdale is the trendiest goalkeeper out so far this week with over 35,000 sales. Pope is also losing managers trust as over 23 plus thousand managers sell him on. In defence Pereira and Kelly are fighting out to be the most transferred out this week with both amassing over 36,000 sales. Rico is not far behind though with 32 plus thousand sales. Williams is so far the trendiest defender in this week with 45 plus thousand purchases. But not surprisingly, Trent and Robson are also getting very trendy as managers look towards the double game week. Trent has been bought by over 40,000 plus managers and Robertson by over 30 plus thousand managers. In midfield, Mares and Richardson are both peaking managers in interests as both have been purchased by over 80 plus thousand managers. Grealish is the next closest trendiest midfielder in this week but by some way with 62 plus thousand purchases. Ali is the trendiest transfer out in midfield this week with over 80 plus thousand managers selling the Spurs man on. Up front Kane has been replaced with Aubameyang as the most transferred out this game week. Over 191 plus thousand managers are sold on the suspended Arsenal striker. Jimenez is also a trendy sale this game week as 
94 plus thousand managers sell on the Wolves man. Ings is by far the trendiest striker in this week with 195 plus thousand purchases. And Aguero has also got managers attention with his hat trick against Villa. Over 95 plus thousand managers have plumped for the city forward. And that's it you guys. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to check out my sponsors fancyfootballfix.com and before you go please 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 if you love this content don't forget to like subscribe and hit that notification bell. Until next time, Nimfri out.